nice man, huh? <laughs> so please welcome back Andre Singer, co-director. Um, Andre, I think you've produced 16 Werner Herzog films, is that right? I've, I've um, either commissioned, produced, or executive produced. <coughs> Was the first one Lessons of Darkness? Sorry? Was the first yeah. film Lessons was of Darkness? The first one. And was that oh, a story film? That's when I was a BBC commissioner. So yeah. I commissioned him to make that film. Amazing. And that's when we got to know each other, and that's when it started. So, my first question is uh, everybody, I'm sure you have loads of questions, but I'm just going to ask a couple first so you can settle in and think about your question. Um, what was different about being co director? with Werner? <laughs> well, <coughs> you, 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 I think it's a unique thing working with Werner. You don't, you don't direct to the same uh, extent that I would if I was making my own film. Um, I, I brought Werner on board the, the film. I, j just to go back a step, I was commissioned to do this film by a German television. MDR in Leipzig, and but they didn't have enough money to fully fund the film, so we then went out and found the rest of the money. And um, I'm detouring deliberately because I think it's it's quite. That's quite right. But you Usually and story, but we'll you gonna... you and Werner were no, no, no just you. A, I was commissioned to do it. Get the facts right. So that was based <laughs> on it was based on the success of a film I had made for MDR before on the Holocaust, called Night Before. Mm -hmm. And they had money to develop new films, and so they did. They then said, in discussion, if I could find, if I could get hold of Gorbachev, they really would be fascinated because no one had done a good film recently about Gorbachev. And um, I went to Moscow, <coughs> met with his people, and they were very reluctant. They didn't want to do a film. And the reason they didn't want to do the film, and this is sort of the, I'm sure this will come back to bite me being indiscreet about it, was the main reason was that they had the sort of stars of Hollywood in their eyes. They had been negotiating with Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> okay. to do a feature film about Gorbachev starring Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio as Gorbachev, which, which I think slightly beggars belief. But that's it. And they'd been doing this for three years. And we then, I then said, look, first of all, that could go on forever. Hollywood negotiations can take forever. And why does doing a good documentary about Mikhail Gorbachev interfere with you negotiating with Hollywood? And then I thought, well, and we could bring on board our own kind of Hollywood figure because I do know that Werner Herzog is fascinated by Gorbachev. I had spoken to him about it and um, obsessed about the uh, reunification of Germany and the Berlin Wall. And so he, he could join us. And Gorbachev had seen some of his films. Uh, the timing was good, you know, in the 70s. And, um, and lo and behold, they changed their minds. So I then went back told Werner. Werner said he'd love to do the interview and so on. And um, no, I mean, it was self-knowledge. I knew that once Werner was there, this would be much more of Werner Herzog film than, than my film. Um, but I thought it would be better for it. Um, and I think I was proven right. And we, we then carved it up, if you like, in that Werner would do the interview. Um, and although we would discuss it, I knew he would ask things that I couldn't dream of asking or wouldn't have written down on paper. You know, I couldn't, how could I say, do you still smell your wife or what do you want in your grapes? <laughs> yes, I mean, these, these are things that just, uh, Werner can do it, I couldn't. Um, so there was, there was that side of it. He wanted to do the Telchik interview in German, which is fine. And then I did everything else. And we then, I then went back with all of the material and we put it together. I put an assembly together in London. Werner then came over and we then buried ourselves in the edit 
Um, and he basically never went back into the original material. He took the assembly and then put his own um, sort of stamp on it. And, and, you, and you, you know things like the, um, the funerals of the dinosaurs in Moscow. You, you, you know that that's a Herzog touch. Or he sat in the edit and said, uh, after I'd um, put together the sequences about Nemeth and Hungary and the cutting of the Iron Curtain, he then said, I remember watching that night on television, and I'm sure that wasn't the main story. And so immediately the researchers went back into the archives and, and lo and behold, there was Austrian television leading with the story of slugs. And so uh, there's a, there you are. <laughs> we'll have the whole of that news clip in the film. And that, that's, that's the way the collaboration went. And so you, he did the interviews and then they came back and you did the research for clips, etc., etc., context, and then you put together a long, presumably, mm -hmm. assembly. Mm -hmm. And then both of you worked to refine the final yeah, form. basically. I mean, we, we argued about who we should interview and how many people. And he, I wanted to interview John Major, and he didn't want... He said, no, boring man, we won't have him. <laughs> and, and when Werner says no, you, you accept it as no unless you want to have a long battle. Was there anything you and disagreed with him about and won? <laughs> So, so it went. It went very well in the end. I mean, it was quite a smooth, <coughs> a surprisingly congenial um, edit on put together. Very good, very remarkable. <laughs> um, but when you sat down originally to talk about making the film, it, you know, people have said in in crits, this is a love letter to Herzog, and it, to a degree, you see that in the film because to him, to Herzog. It, it, Mr. Herzog, it's a it's a unique experience because he was German, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. But also, it's the thirtieth anniversary of the Berlin Wall come down. Was that kind of on your mind or on anybody's not, mind? Not, not really. I mean, it was. I think part of it was from day one we decided to to some extent to the annoyance of the German broadcaster. <coughs> who wanted a much more rigorous historical film. But we weren't going to do that. We were going to, uh, I think a love letter is slightly too strong, um, but we, we wanted to do a film about the, the human being behind the politician, the character. We wanted to get to grips with Gorbachev as a man rather than just as a politician. Obviously in the context of the time and what happened and with a reflection of what it might, uh, how it might reflect on contemporary politics and so on. Um, but it was a, an unashamed um, look at somebody that we both ended up admiring greatly. And he's, he was a consummate character in that way. He, he disarmed us from day one. You know, we went in thinking we're going to meet this great political figure and he was a twinkly old grandfather, you know, sort of who put us at our ease and discussed things with the crew and and you know, you you could not help liking the man. Um, and, and and I think I think Werner was absolutely correct in the beginning where he said, um, you know, I thought he was playing politics. Yeah. I can't remember the exact words he said, but um, in the end, we found everything about him was genuine. This this was what Gorbachev was like. Extraordinary. Did did you feel in my last question? And I open it to the audience. Did you feel in a way that you were retrieving his role in history from um, the kind of annihilation of of uh, criticism and abuse? I I, <coughs> I don't think we went into the film with that in mind. Um, I, I, I think that I feel personally actually quite proud of the fact that here we have a, an ailing person who has been out of any kind of political role for 30 years, and one forgets that, but people have forgotten who he is, 
Uh, my son's generation hardly know who Gorbachev was or did. You know, they've heard of the Cold War, but that's about it. Those of us who lived through it remember it mm. um, did it? intensely, but, it, but that's, that's very different. And I think that by the end of the film, um, we then did feel that we'd given, A, given him a platform, um, but also were in a position to remind people of the legacy of the man. And <clears throat> I took the film back to show him uh, a few months ago. It was one of the promises I made that he could see the film. And again, he came from hospital to see it and we had an audience of about 150 <laughs> people, friends of his and so on, in Moscow. And <clears throat> um, he sat through the film and at the end of the film, Somebody said to him in Russian, um, Mr. Gorbachev, in two words, what do you think of the film? And he sort of sat, as he tends to do, not just because of translations, but he, th he thinks about questions and before jumping into answering them. And he said, good film. <laughs> uh, and then he said, then he paused and he said, full of adventure and just like my life, good <laughs> film. And, so, and, and subsequent to that, he's now been, partly because of the Berlin Wall anniversary and everything else, but I think partly because of the film itself, and he's, uh, last week he was interviewed on the BBC and various other things, um, and Mansky is making another film about it. Um, I think he feels he has a platform again. It's been retrieved. And it's, the platform is kind of, you know, he, he has simple messages like you in there. It's about nuclear arms, it's about reform, it's about democracy, it's about the environment. Um, and you, you kind of, it, make, it always makes me think, here you've got this man um, who we in the West tend to admire greatly and everywhere around the world, who is hated in Russia. He's surrounded by people who despise him and dislike him. And it was the one question I kept asking people over and over again. Why, you know, what is it about Gorbachev that you so dislike? You know, he, is it his reforms? Is it perestroika and glasnost? Is it nuclear weapons, getting rid of nuclear weapons? Is it, you know, why do you dislike the man so much? And it all boils down to one thing. I mean, this is me being grossly unfair on history because because I can afford to do so. I'm not a historian, I'm a filmmaker. Um, <coughs> and it is um, it is basically because he gave the, in their eyes, he gave the empire away. The, the Russian pride has never recovered from the fact that they were a massive empire um, and as a result of what this man did in some form or another, they lost their empire. Um, and that has dented, I think, Russian pride greatly. And so he is this rather sad, neglected figure in his hometown. Um, and, and uh, you know, that's where he will die. Well, that's what's interesting in the film, is that actually he didn't do that, and that what he'd planned was reform. But was reform possible? In the film, everyone says not possible. It was the beginning of the death of the USSR. But that's what he, he intended to do, yeah. wasn't it? Any questions, anyone? Yes. Um, and then you... Oh, sorry. That's all right. And then you... Run. Oh. If I don't hear properly, you may have to reload. Yeah. Uh, just, um, just a quick observation, I suppose, or any question. Um, I imagine you probably shot loads of footage. I wanted to know what you left out of the film, and did Gorbachev actually mention anything about politics today, any of the leaders today? Um... Yeah, I did get that. Um, <coughs> uh, it goes back to what I was just saying about his position in Russia. He is, he and Putin um, clearly don't like each other. They make oblique comments, but they don't attack each other in public. He, his family live in Berlin, uh, his daughter and his granddaughters and so on. But he, he won't. He wants to live in Moscow and he wants to die in Moscow. So I'm Russian. You know, and I think it's part of this Russian soul that uh, he embodies, I think, to me at least. 
um, and <coughs> um, he's sort of on sufferance. Um, Putin could push him out. Uh, he couldn't imprison him or anything, but he could push him out of the country. Um, and they have a kind of unspoken pact that they won't, in terms of names, attack each other. Now, Gorbachev gets around that, I think, quite a lot by talking about politicians. Mm. Politicians today yeah. are corrupt. The, this has not, not fulfilled what he wanted in the past and so on. And everybody knows who he's talking about. You know, he doesn't have to say Trump. He doesn't have to say Putin. But you all know that the sort of how disappointed and upset he is about contemporary politics. But I think he is very careful not to actually get himself involved in particular incidents in contemporary politics. He just infers. And to some extent, I think that's probably a stronger battleground for him to fight on. Um, and he has now been making more and more noise in the last year uh, about what's been going on around the world and his disappointment. But I think particularly nuclear arms, that, that's the thing that upset him the most, that he felt, he felt that he and Reagan and later Bush could have, but certainly Reagan, went such a long way towards something that nobody believed at that time could ever happen. And he, he, you know, he says in the film, but he says it even more strongly in lots of his interviews, so that, you know, that is, it's madness to go along the route that we're now going on. Um, so he does refer to contemporary politics in that way without actually having to say, you know, Putin, you're a bad man or whatever. <clears throat> to a degree, didn't Reagan, though he appeared to be the appeaser, so, did, didn't Reagan, though he appeared to be the appeaser, actually scupper that uh, agreement? I, it, it wasn't so much... No, they, they did agree eventually. At that particular Reykjavik meeting, um, nothing was signed and nothing was agreed. It was just the first part of a process that ended up with the um, uh, long-range missile Nuclear treaty and yeah. so on. And that was, that was quite dramatic, dramatic at the time. Absolutely. Uh, there's a question at the back and then... <coughs> I just wanted to say thank you for such a moving film. Um, uh, as my previous, uh, the previous person asking, you uh, said that you must have a lot of material left. And I'm just wondering, would you be able to make a second part for this film? Can you make it? Can you make a part two? Can I make part oh, two? <laughs> um, I think I think the moment has probably gone. Um, the I think I don't know if anyone here saw the BBC interview with him last week. Um, he's already declined quite considerably since we filmed him last year. And he um, he's back back and forward into hospital a lot at the moment. Um, there are, he can't talk for a long period of time. That's the problem. He gets very tired. And there are hundreds of things that we would have liked to have asked him. Um, but it was I, both inappropriate and because he was ailing, but we, we weren't able to. And I don't think we'd be able to do that now. now part, of the, part of the story, I think, of part one on the film, let's call it that, or the film that we've done, um, was that we weren't trying to cover all the details and the history of what happened during that era. You think he was only in power for seven years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a fantastic seven years, but it was not a huge period of time. Um, and when asked at one of the showings we had, where Verna was with me, of, um, of the film, this was in Toronto, with a massive audience, and somebody did ask a question of, why didn't you cover, and I can't remember now what it was, it was one particular historical incident that they wanted us to cover. And 
Verna was um, explaining to Elizabeth, Verna was rather irate <laughs> at this question. And in his sort of imperious manner, he stood up and he went. I can't, I can't do it here. Probably. He stopped. I'm treading, <laughs> treading on. He strode to the front of the stage and he gazed at the audience and looked for the person who'd asked this question. Couldn't see him, I mean, there's lights everywhere and so on. But he pointed and he said, I am not a historian, I'm a poet. <laughs> and everybody froze, and that was the end of the question. <laughs> what question here? Thank you. Thank you, that was extraordinarily moving, um, wonderful. Will it be shown in Russia? Can it be shown in Russia? Certainly. Has it been shown in oh, Russia? Yeah. Can it be? Will it be? Yes, yeah, actually, um, we thought, first of all, we thought we would be hindered in the trips we made and the interviews we were given because they clearly knew what we were doing. Uh, I mean, Gorbachev, is, he's got his own people who look after him, but he's also got government minders. Um, uh, and so they knew we were making a film. But we had no interference. We had, we were stopped filming in his old school and things at his home on one occasion that we wanted to do. Not, they didn't say, no, you can't. They said, oh, you have to have a, a permit from this ministry and they have to, uh, and we knew we weren't going to get it. Um, so we, we were pleasantly surprised that we weren't interfered with at that time. Then when uh, I agreed to take the film back to show it to him, uh, we hired a cinema in the centre of Moscow, a small cinema, and I thought they would stop us having a private showing there for him. Um, and he was in hospital, he came out of hospital for the showing, and he had a whole group, this is the group of friends where he said it was a good film. Um, and. Uh, again, security people checked the cinema out and they allowed us to do that, so that was good. And at that showing, a lot of press and journalists turned up, r Russian journalists and press, and television people. And they were clamouring outside the cinema to speak to him and to um, speak to us and find out more about the film and so on. And um, as a result of that... Uh, there have been quite a lot of newspapers, there have been a lot of newspaper coverage, but also the most popular television channel in Moscow um, is showing the film and has bought it. So it is going to be shown. And the final thing which really took me by surprise was that the Moscow Film Festival, which is kind of their Oscars, Hollywood red carpet, you know, beautiful debutantes and people in bow ties and all. Um, <coughs> um, decided to close the festival by showing the film. And so I was invited across and, um, and we had a, 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 a huge screening in a major cinema in Moscow to... Um, but no Gorbachev. Minister of Culture turned up. So, Sorry, but no Gorbachev. No, he was too ill. Yeah. He actually was. He sent a message which was read out on stage for, to everybody. But Has it made any difference to how the people are regarding him? I don't know, they're just speaking amongst themselves. No, Could sorry. you speak more loudly? You don't sorry. have a mic, I'm sorry. Sorry, I was just saying, has it made any difference so far that you know how the people regard him? Or is that yet to come? I would, I would love to think so, but I, I, I think that would be wishful thinking. I, I, I think, I think, I mean, I spoke to a lot of people there, and younger generation when I say you know you you Russians don't like this man why what's wrong with it and so on I got the same answer but from all of them I mean different words but the same sense which was it's our parents generation you know we don't mind them it's our parents when you talk to the parents you think well hang on a minute when he came into power in the mid 80s he was hugely popular people loved him at the end of his seven years, people hated him. Um, and they, had, you know, as I say, it was probably because of I mean, my interpretation of it, crude interpretation, is that it was because of the loss of the empire and the dent to Russian pride. Um, but, but that generation have never really forgiven him for that. And I, you know, 
I, I think logically people understand that he was sincere and he so on, but I think my, my second crude interpretation of history is because the Russians, and this is mass popular psychology, I'm sure and I'll be hauled up for it, but Russians like a strong leader. Um, and at the end of the empire, the beginning of the collapse, he had troops that he could have hauled in. For, he, he had 500,000 Russian troops in East Germany at the time of the fall of the Berlin Wall. You know, one flick of the finger and that could have been stumped on. But Gorbachev was not prepared to do that. And I think, I think his legacy in history, that will be one of the things that will come down, that in a way he was a strong leader in a different way. <clears throat> Another question, anyone? I was one, oh, oh, sorry. I was wondering if you have a favorite scene in the movie. I, I didn't get that time. Sorry. What I'm is sorry, I was looking to see how much time I had left. <laughs> Can you say it again? <laughs> what, is, what is your favorite scene in the movie? What's your favorite scene in the movie? <laughs> um, I suppose, I think it has to be the, um, the dinosaurs on the... <laughs> uh, Kremlin War. I just think we we had we had enormous fun putting it together, and um, with you know Chopin's march going across all three funerals, and uh, that's very much a Herzogian kind of image. You know, uh, I, that was very much him saying, "We'll bring all of that story together because you know one, two, three, and and we found in the archives almost identical footage of the three previous leaders. And so it was nice in a way to be able to <coughs> encapsulate a whole period of history almost as a joke. I mean it wasn't a joke, of course it was tragic, but it but <coughs> but that's what then propelled the man who went through all of those three funerals into into power mm -hmm. as a young um, Politburo leader. So. Great. We're going to have to stop, I'm afraid. I'm <clears throat> sorry, I'm sure we could go on, but we've run out of time, I've, I've just realised. So, Andre, thanks so much. That's really, really insightful and interesting. And thank you, everybody, for coming to see the film. Thank you very much. <laughs>